Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss today's Tory sleaze scandal. It's a big one. In fact, it should be partygate levels of scandal. Only it's not going to be because the MP at the centre of it is largely unknown and the media are already covering for the Conservative Party for their role in this sordid affair. Like even the Guardian's covering for them. So although I'm going to go over a few details as we work through the video towards the end, let me summarise essentially what's happened and why I think this should be a way bigger story than it is going to end up being. First of all, the MP in question, Mark Menzies, is alleged by his own constituency colleagues of taking thousands of pounds, actually tens of thousands of pounds of money from them for various dodgy reasons and not paying them back, concealing donations for the purpose of campaign funding and then using his party's campaign funds to pay for his own personal expenses. Uh, those personal expenses are really very, very dodgy. The alleged behaviour appears to have taken place over a lot of years and someone or maybe a couple of people finally got tired of it and reported him to Simon Hart, the Conservative Chief Whip. Now, according to the Times who broke the story last night, Hart then passed the information on to CCHQ, Conservative Campaign Headquarters, who have been investigating for at least the past three months. Now, rather before I go over any sort of the details of the allegations, the most serious issue here is surely that the Conservatives, as a party, as a leadership, have been covering up potential crimes here. The news is all about this rogue Tory MP. If the allegations are true, he has extorted money and even got a dog, a dog drunk once. But consider what's happened here. The Tory leadership and headquarters have been given evidence of serious criminal offences and did not refer the matter to the police. They have been given evidence of misuse of campaign funds and have not referred the matter to the Electoral Commission. And they were given this information months ago, so they've got no excuse. And then there's something else. The Times broke the story at half past nine last night. So very late, because they were saving it for their front page in today's paper. A bit of an exclusive for them. Now, I'm a bit of an insomniac. So a story breaks like that, of course, I'm going to be checking out the updates, right? By midnight, Menzies had the Tory party whip removed. Now, I didn't expect that. That was very rap rapid. And I'll tell you why I didn't expect it. Because it's the sort of thing that absolutely should happen. Don't get me wrong. But... They usually try and stand by. Their, their first instinct is to stand by the MP. For example, William Ragg, that was the most recent Tory scandal. They never actually removed the whip from him. He doesn't have the party whip. Remember, he had to sack himself because Rishi Sunak was too weak to do it. So they were, they were covering for him there. Or even Peter Bone. Now, they did remove the whip from Peter Bone eventually. Consider that his behaviour was really awful. And yet the Tories only removed the whip from him once he'd already been found guilty as a result of an independent investigation, like a parliamentary investigation, not an internal party one. And even then they did it the next day. So they didn't even do it on the day when he'd been found guilty. It was the following day. They were, they were in no hurry to remove the whip from him. This Mark Menzies has not admitted anything. Like He denies getting the dog drunk, by the way. There's not been an investigation outside of the Conservative Party. I mean, by the time this video comes out, there bloody well should be. But there hasn't as yet been an investigation started outside of the party. And yet the whip was removed as soon as the story was published online. Now, that tells us two things. First of all, it tells us that the media are covering for the Tories. Like the BBC, I'll pick on those because they should, you know, we should be holding those to the highest standards. The BBC headline on the story is... Tory MP suspended over alleged misuse of campaign funds. No, he wasn't. The Tories were told of the allegations three months ago. He had the whip in all that time. He was suspended because the public found out. Second, that the Tories realise this is serious and they clearly think the allegations have a lot of merit from their own investigation. And this is why I think the focus of the media should be Yes, the behaviour of the MP at the centre of this is shocking. But do you know what? It's another sleaze monster to throw into the pile. He should be investigated, of course, if the allegations uh, you know, are sufficient evidence. He should be charged with any and all relevant offences. Absolutely. 
The local party members who are effectively victims should probably also get some training in how not to go along with behaviour like this in the future. I mean, seriously, when you read what is alleged to have happened, you wonder why. Why did it ever happen? Why did anyone go along with this? Why did it take so many years as well for someone to get fed up with it? You know, I would put it down to this weird attitude of conservatives to be so deferential to people who had privilege thrust upon them. Menzies came from an ordinary background in many ways. Seems to be a perfectly ordinary background, but he went to private school. I think it was like a scholarship, that type of thing. But he did go to private school. This is almost certainly where he developed his bloated sense of entitlement. But what the media should focus on more is why the Conservative leadership and CCHQ did not pass on evidence of criminal offences to the authorities. It's not an internal party matter. And these alleged offences were conducted against their own. Like, you can't even say this is a case of the Tories covering for their own. It doesn't even have that vague shadow of nobility to it. They are covering up crimes against their own. The victims are all Conservative Party members and activists, some of whom who aren't even being paid for their involvement within the party, but even those who are, they're not paid much. What an image to project in election year. We don't give a crap about our hard-working activists, only our sleazy MPs. And also, they don't get to call it an internal party matter just because all the funds relate to party donors and, and all the rest of it. It's like, no, because remember, there is a criminal investigation going on which is all about internal party funds in Scotland. Remember, I don't know why it's taking so long, but Nicola Sturgeon and a couple of other members of the SNP are being investigated by the Scottish police over a matter that is absolutely all about party funding, and yet that investigation is still going on. So in this particular case, where it's actually not even all party funds, because some of this is money that came from party members' personal bank accounts. He's basically taking the money from their own pockets. This is clearly criminal investigation territory. And now that the allegations have been published, the police and the Electoral Commission should be getting involved. And what's more, a plod or two should be heading over to London to find out why the Tory top brass were concealing evidence of crimes from them and what else they may know that's not come out in the, in the Times. They won't know, will they? No, the focus is clearly going to be on the MP himself and not at all on the crime syndicate that has tried to keep this quiet. In fact, you'd imagine the reason it ended up in the Times at all is because whoever at the local party level had tried to raise this with the party leadership was not impressed with the lack of action from them and so got the news media involved as a last resort. Mind you, I'd, I'd still say even they should have reported it to the police. And in their own party interest, I get the reasoning. I'm not blaming those local party activists because I do get it. Something happens and you think, right, you know, you don't want to hurt your party. So out of party loyalty, you use your own internal party systems, right? And you expect others to deal with it. However, look what's now happened. The Conservatives are exposed as covering up crimes. That should hurt, even if the media don't go with it, Labour should, that should hurt the Tory reputation even more. It's false loyalty to let the party treat it as an internal party matter when it clearly is not. Whereas if they'd gone to the police from the offset, if they'd gone from, to the police and the Electoral Commission, the Tory leadership wouldn't be able to cover it up because it'd already be public. You know, they'd be forced to do the right thing and make the right noises. But anyway, just to add how serious this should be for the Tory leadership, let's finish off with a few specific details for those who haven't seen them already. Mark Menzies is alleged to have rung a campaign manager, and a very elderly campaign manager in the early hours of the morning, and told them he'd got in with some bad people and needed to pay five grand or they were going to keep him locked up. He's alleged to have used £14,000 worth of party campaign funds for his own private medical treatment. It's not made clear if the treatment was even real, if anyone checked, or is that just the excuse he gave? Again, I, I just, I liken this to someone, because this is, as far as I can tell, he's got an ordinary-ish background, but he did go to private school. So he's gone to private school, he's developed this sense of entitlement by rubbing shoulders with people who had the resources to be that entitled, but he didn't. So he's resorted, and this is just my speculation, of course, he's resorted to dishonesty in order to sort of 
fund the lifestyle he thinks he's entitled to. That's what it sounds like to me. Was the medical treatment even necessary? Did he have to get it done privately? Would the NHS have done it in time? Or did he even have any medical treatment? Was he just using the money for whatever, drugs or whatever? It's not made clear if any of the things he claimed to need the money for were even real. Like there was one, for example, five grand. He went to he went to someone's house, got a bit drunk. There's a lot of stories of, of his boorish, drunkish behaviour, by the way. He's a very aggressive drunk by the sounds of it. But he goes to someone to get drunk. He goes to someone else's house, gets even more drunk. Then he's demanding from AIDS. AIDS pay him five grand, he says, to clear up the mess. Because if he doesn't, if he doesn't pay for the cleanup, then he's going to be in real trouble. How do you cause five grand's worth of cleaning up after a drunken party at someone's home? Like the last time I left a rented home, I paid for a full deep clean of the whole place. Didn't cost me anywhere near five grand. That was a deep clean of an entire house. What the hell? There's also an allegation, as I say, that he got someone else's dog drunk, but that's that'll be the most difficult to prove, probably impossible to prove. Um, but just another example of his, you know, so many examples of this, his drunken behaviour, unbelievable. Um, you know, one where he completely ruined the evening for people who'd actually paid to be there and he was there free. Basically, the article is a litany of incredibly entitled and dishonest behaviour. Uh, they are allegations, but even some of the things that Menzies doesn't seem to deny are still pretty terrible. Like, he doesn't even seem to deny that he's used party funds for his own personal expenses. He seems to think that's fine because the signatories on the account authorised it. Doesn't make it fine. You know, the Tories clearly think these claims, claims are credible because they've removed the whip and they don't do that. We've had examples of poor behaviour where they have not until it's been proven beyond doubt. So, yeah, they've removed the whip as soon as the story broke. But what the chief whip should have done is referred the matter to the police and the Electoral Commission. And I'm serious here. I think there needs to be a criminal offence, a specific criminal offence, of failing to notify the correct authorities when informed about potential crimes for, specifically for political party complaints uh, officers. Because there's too much of this goes on. It's not unique to the Tories, but it does not have happened a lot more for them. Like some dodginess is known about internally. So party members access the party's internal complaint system, party loyalty. They don't want, you know, the party to get an unnecessarily bad rep out of it. Um, now, in those internal party processes, the people are trained to deal with them. They should be under a legal duty. If, the, if you're talking about criminal uh, offences or evidence of criminal offences, they should refer it to the police. Because this, this whole party loyalty thing is very bad for politics. The people in charge of receiving those complaints should be legally required to act properly. Cannot have political parties concealing crimes and claiming that they're investigating internally instead. They do not get to decide whether evidence is strong enough to then go to the police. No, the police are always the first port of call in assessing the strength of evidence in a criminal case. And then it goes to prosecutors if they think it is. It's not party officials that decide these things. This should be a massive story. Not how a Tory MP has treated even his own colleagues like a doormat, but how the Conservative Party think themselves above their own laws. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.